Welcome to Home Groups. Today, Pastor John Carter is going to continue to teach us all about home. Together, we create the family of God, the home where God dwells. But like every family, sometimes we struggle to really connect. God has designed us to build relationships, but what are the practical steps to connecting with the community where we're called to grow? How do we really settle into our home life and build real relationships with others? In this new series, we will teach you that no matter what challenges you face, God is calling you to build relationships, connect with the local church, and find your place at home. Following this message, you'll have the opportunity to pray with some of the people in your group and then go a little deeper into our topic together with some discussion questions we have provided for you online at alcclife.org. So sit back, relax, and get ready for home groups. Hey everybody, welcome to home groups for the month of October. It is great to be with you right now. I want to encourage you, just kick off your shoes, relax, and let's study the Bible, the Word of God together. Uh, I want to talk to you this month about building your home. Now last month in home groups, if you were with us, we talked about the fact that God has created and designed us for relationship with himself and with one another. He's designed us to be people who long for home. In the beginning, God made man, he put us on the earth, and he made his home with us on earth. He walked with us on earth. When man fell and sinned, we lost that connection with God. But Jesus came into this world, he came into our lives to reconnect us with God. Jesus said that I'm going to heaven and I'm gonna prepare a place for you. In my Father's house, there are many homes, many mansions, and I'm gonna receive you to myself. See, we have a home in heaven, but we also know that when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, he makes his home on the inside of us and God lives in us and with us. But the third important truth is that God has built us for creating a home with one another called the local church. God's connected us not only with himself, but with each other. And if we're gonna live in home, if we're gonna live in God's home, which is his church on earth, then we're gonna have to learn how to build a healthy home, how to build those connections that make our walk with God and our walk with one another effective and exciting. You know, Jesus said this in John 17. He basically said, when we get relationships right, we have the power to change the world. Listen to these words. John 17, 23. I am in them, Father, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. See, God lives in us when we accept him as Christ is our savior and, and we are in God. But what's so important is that when we begin to get in unity with one another and the God that is in me and the God that is in you starts connecting with each other, then it says the whole world will know Jesus and that God sent Jesus to the world. In other words, when we get relationship with one another right, when we build real connection and unity with each other in the local church, we actually become a witness for Christ in the world. One of the reasons that the church has been ineffective in really reaching other people and so many times throughout the last 2,000 years is because we have been so divided. We haven't worked on connection and relationship. Uh, very often it's been said that Christians are the only army that shoots their own wounded. You know, it's, it's really unfortunate, but when, sometimes when believers are going through a hard time or a struggle or they fail, other Christians judge them or, or you know, disconnect from them. Rather than building that unity, we need to understand that God wants us not only to accept his love for us, but because we are loved unconditionally by God, we need to accept one another and build those relationships. And when we get it right, we have the power to change the world. Now, building a home requires effort. And I wanna to talk to you about that. In the book of Ephesians chapter four, the apostle Paul talking about the church connecting together said this in verse 15 but practicing the truth in love we will all in everything grow up into Christ who is the head from him the whole body grows that's the church fitted and held together through every supporting ligament as each one does its part the body grows in love now the Bible says that the church is a body and that each part of the body has a part to do. 
And it also says that the body grows and the church is supposed to grow, which tells us a few things about building God's home on earth or building God's church. First of all, building a home is a process. It's not overnight. You just don't show up in church and it's a finished deal. We have to actually go through a process to build community and relationship and culture in the local church. So a process requires us to be committed to one another over a period of time. Not only that, but building a home is intentional. When a person goes to build a house, they don't just, you know, go to the local hardware store and pick up some wood and just, you know, start figuring it out along the way. When I was a young kid growing up, we used to build forts in my family's property in the woods. And sometimes we would go to the local hardware store and we would find some planks and some boards that were laying around in some of our neighbor's homes or out in the, in the garbage heap. And, and we'd take some nails and we tried to build a fort. And every single time we tried to build a fort without really thinking about the process first, without having some kind of plan, that fort would start to fall down. Uh, one of my brothers would, would be you know, trying to build uh, one side of the fort and someone else would be trying to put the roof on and we'd end up just do, having different visions, different ideas of how it should be built. And you know, a lot of churches are like that. Everybody feels like they have their own idea, their own agenda, their own vision. One person says, well, my gift is this, or another person says, well, this is what I want the church to be. And everybody thinks that the church is sort of like karaoke night at the local karaoke bar. Everybody's, you know, going to kind of sing their own tune, whatever they want to sing, and somehow it's going to make a beautiful harmony. The reality is you can't build a house that way. You can't build a fort that way. Uh, you got to have a plan. And I remember when my dad first sat down and said, listen, boys, you want to build a fort. This is what we're going to do. And he drew out a little plan for how that fort was going to look. He talked about the structure. We used an old a swing set frame, actually, you know, those swing sets that used to be those A-frames made out of metal. And, and he, he said, we're going to tie some boards to each side so it serves as a roof as well as a side. And uh, then we're going to tie the boards together this way. And, and he basically drew a little plan. And then we went and got the materials. We set it up. And then we all worked as a coordinated unit and got the thing done. And it was the fort that lasted the longest of all the forts that we built because we had a plan and we were intentional about it. Listen, building a home in your local church, in this local church, is not just something that just happens. You have to be intentional. We've got to have a plan and we've got to have a purpose. Not only that, but building a home is work. You can't just sit back and let other people do it for you. Uh, you have a part to play. In fact, notice what the Bible says, every part does its share. Each person in the home has a responsibility to build relationship. And I'm going to say this to you. Just coming to church and saying, well, no one talks to me and no one really reaches out to me and I just feel so upset. Listen, I'm not trying to be unkind, but this is the reality. You have a part to play. Building a relationship is not just about other people serving you. The local church is not just like going to the local Walmart and being a consumer. Uh, it's really building something and every person that's a part of that church has a responsibility to work to build relationships. Relationships require effort. They require intentionality and they require us to be committed to a process. Which brings me to the last thing I want to say, and then we're going to give you some building techniques. You and I are each responsible for building God's home in our local church. Each one of us are responsible. God's not going to hold us accountable if for someone else not being loving or kind or not building relationship, but he's going to talk to us about what we've done to build relationships with others. And as long as you look at your relationships with others as something that people owe you and you're waiting for people to deliver that to you, you're always going to be disappointed. But if you start realizing that I have a relationship with God and it's not about what I get from people as much as it is about what I can do to build community with other people, and you start understanding your role and you focus more on your role, it's amazing how as you start doing your part, God starts opening up relationships and other people will start doing their part. So let's talk about some techniques. How do we build these connections with people in the local church in such a way that we really build a home for ourselves and for God to show up and do what he wants to do? The kind of home that will really be a witness to the world. Well, I wanna give you 10 building techniques for developing community and relationship in God's home, the church. First of all, Number one, 
understand the circles of relationship. Healthy relationships are built progressively and relationships occupy different spaces. Just imagine some concentric circles that are surrounding each other building out. When you begin in a relationship with somebody, you typically begin on the outside circle from an introduction to an acquaintance and as you begin to share life and information and connect, you move progressively closer. Now this is important. Not every relationship is supposed to be a close, intimate, deeply connected inner circle relationship because you, first of all, you can't manage that many intimate relationships at one time. Second of all, God has a purpose for every relationship in your life and a space for every relationship. What you and I have to do is understand the space that each relationship is supposed to be in in our lives and be comfortable with that and, and understand that in every circle and every level of intimacy, there is something that we can benefit from another person. There's, another, there's something we can benefit from a relationship. And moving too quickly through the circles of relationship to try to get really intimate immediately may feel very exhilarating, but usually it damages the relationship in the long term. Every now and then there's someone that you'll connect with and you just feel like you've known them forever and you can go deep and fast with them. But even in those relationships, if you skip some of the other steps, then very often down the road, uh, when your relationship is challenged or you go through a hard time, you'll find that there's some missing elements in the relationship. The best relationships are the ones that are built over time. And remember this, sometimes the people that you actually have in your life that are the best friends to you or, or had the best relationships for you are not people that initially you may have even liked or looked at twice. In fact, very often people that we think are, you know, uh, we, we just disregard or we think are not going to be valuable to us or we don't have anything in common with, we find out in another point, in another time, we connect and we suddenly realize that we have a lot more in common or a lot more that we can share with each other than we thought. Some of our closest relationships in life are often people that at first we didn't imagine they would be anything that we would necessarily have a close connection with. So remember that relationships are circular and they're progressive. Be committed to the process and don't force a relationship into a closer circle than it needs to be. Just accept the circles of relationship and allow God to lead you through the process. Second of all, this is a very important building technique. You got to show up. Uh, you can't build relationships if you sit in front of your television and feel bad about yourself all the time. You have to put yourself in places to connect with people. Go places. Do things. Uh, go to church, go to home groups, show up at institute classes and courses, get involved in life change groups, uh, get involved in community events, festivals or fairs, go places where things are happening. You don't even have to have a lot of money to go to a park or to go for a walk. Get out of yourself so often, and this can happen often in, even in, in, in the world that we live in today, where we live so often in front of our telephones and, and in front of our, our uh, our computers and we live in this cyber world, it's easier to connect sometimes with a screen than it is to connect with people in real life. But those screen connections will never provide on the inside the kind of relationships that we really need. That's why we have to show up. Get out of yourself and make yourself go and show up. You can't build relationships if you're not there. Number three, take the initiative. Life rewards people who take the first step, whether it's in business, whether it's in, it's in any area of life. If you take the initiative, more often than not, over time, you're, it's gonna reward you, it's gonna pay you back. Sometimes you see people and you sit across the room from them or you sit near them and you wonder if they're gonna show an interest in you. And very often they're wondering the same thing. One of the most important things you can do in building relationships is just walk across the room, get up, and walk over to somebody else. If you're sitting in the sanctuary before a service and there's a few empty chairs around you and don't sit there and say, why isn't anybody sitting next to me? Look around, maybe there's someone else that's sitting alone. Stand up and walk over to them and say, hi, my name is John, how are you doing today? Uh, wh where are you from? What brought you to church today? And just build a relationship. Take the, initi uh, the initiative. You make the call, you send the text, 
you send an email. You take the first step and keep taking those initiatives. Over time, it'll pay off. Number four, open your heart to people. You can't be closed and build connections. You can't sit around and just feel intimidated and overwhelmed and not open up and have relationships. If people ask you questions and you only give one word answers and then you complain because, well, I don't have any real connections with people, well, you're not opening your heart. Now, that can be scary, especially if you've been hurt before. And I understand what it's like to be hurt or rejected, and that can be very, very difficult. But as Christians, we have to overcome our fear of rejection. We're going to have to realize that people sometimes will disappoint us, and all of us at times will feel rejected, but Christ has accepted us unconditionally. Number five, and this one's important, be friendly and show interest. If you come to a home group or you attend a, a prayer meeting or uh, you go to church, or even if you're in a classroom in, in, at, at school where you go to school or at one of our institute classes, and you just sit there and you're not friendly. And if people talk to you, you don't show yourself friendly. You don't open your heart and mind and begin to converse with people, then you're not gonna build those connections that God wants you to build. Show interest in people. Don't just wait for people to show interest in you. In fact, uh, share some things about yourself when people ask you questions. Open up a little bit, share some things, have some things ready to talk about, some things that you like or enjoy. Uh, not only that, but ask questions. One of the best ways to build connections with people is to show interest in them by asking them questions. Uh, so what's your name? Uh, how are you doing today? Now where do you work? What do you do for a living? Really, that's very interesting. And if they tell you something that you connect with, don't immediately go into a long story about how you were once doing that uh, and talk about yourself. Continue to show interest in them. Make sure that when you're conversing with people that, and you're talking to people, that you're really drawing out of them things and listen to what they say. Sometimes people just listen to respond instead of listening to understand. You know, that, you know what that's like when you're in a, in a disagreement with your spouse or with someone that you love, and uh, they're talking, but all you're doing is thinking about what you're going to say back to them. You're not seeking to understand them. It's irritating in a conversation. It's irritating in a relationship. It's irritating in an argument because we want to know that we're heard. And so show some interest. When someone says something, even if it's not fascinating to you, it's interesting to them. And so show some interest, ask other questions. Sometimes asking questions is a great way to get to know somebody else and then try to remember one or two things that they told you. It's important to show interest and be friendly. Number six, and this is an important building technique in relationships, accept people for who they are. Now I'm gonna say something. One of the biggest perils in Christian relationships is that we move out of the love walk and we begin to sit in the judge's seat. So many Christians are judges. And as they grow in Christ, and as they get some holiness in their life, and they get some sin out of their life, and they begin to get some victory in their life, so often they get lifted up with pride and think they're better than others and judge people who don't have that same victory, that same knowledge, don't understand the same thing. If you're talking to somebody, don't assume that they know everything you know from the Word. Don't use so much Christianese that they can't relate to you. Like, I've been washed in the blood. Have you been washed in the blood? Well, you know, they might think that you're a mass murderer. Um, they may not have that understanding yet of what that means. You know, make sure that when you're communicating to somebody, you, you don't say things in a way that are going to alienate them and accept them for who they are. Don't judge them just because they don't think the way that you think. So often, we immediately judge people because they may say one thing about a politician that is a politician we think is evil, or they may say one thing about about uh, something that we think indicates that they have a certain view of life that's different than ours, not just politically, but even a perspective that has to do with, with how, they, how they see the world. And so often we tend to let the world narrow our circles of relationships because we don't think we can have relationships with people who don't think like us, who don't look like us, who don't have the same uh, same economic background as us, and that is so wrong. As Christians, we need to open the circle of our relationships to people who think and even appear differently. Don't judge people based on their appearances. If, if there might be somebody that looks really different than you, 
They may dress in a way that you think, in your opinion, is ridiculous. They may have things that they pierce their face with, or be ha they may have tattoos, or they may look really straight-laced, and they may not be cool and hip to you because they don't dress in a way that is really, you know, connecting with you. But you know what? Don't judge people just because they're older than you or younger than you or look different than you or come from a different part of the community than you or go to a school. Don't judge people. Just, just get out of the stinking judge's seat. And I can hear you all saying amen right now. Everyone knows what it's like to feel judged. You know when someone's judging you. You know that look, that mmm. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what I'm talking about when someone is judging you. You know when your wife's doing it. You know when your husband's doing it. You know when your parents are doing it. You know when your friends are doing it. And no one likes to be judged. No one. So just decide, I'm not going to judge you. I, may, I don't have to agree with you. I can even really think that you're, you, you know, what, the way you think about that is not correct, but I'm not going to make broad assumptions that you're stupid or dumb or that you're this way or that way uh, and alienate myself from you in my heart just because you think differently and have a different perspective or look differently than me. This is a big one. It's a big one. You need to look at the circles of your life. Do you have in the circles of your relationship people that don't think like you on every issue? You should. Do you have people in your life that don't necessarily look like you, that don't have the same experience as you? As Christians in a church like this, Abundant Life Christian Center, you ought to. Over time, you ought to be building relationships with other people. And you've got to accept people for who they are. You need to make room for people to have weaknesses. They're gonna fail. Sometimes they're gonna make commitments. Some people are chronically late for things. Some people are chronically uh, on time and they, are, they tend to be controlling and very fastidious and very literal about everything. And people who are more artistic and flow in their lives tend to be irritated by people that are very literal and specific and left-brained. But you know what? You need some left-brained people in your life. And, uh, and, and you left-brained you know, absolutists, you need some people in your life that know how to flow, and you need some procrastinators in your life, and you need some people that know how to relax in your life. So, again, <laughs> this is a big one. I think we're hearing some, you're probably laughing a little bit right now, but you need people in your life that you might naturally exclude from your circles of relationship. Make room for people that don't think like you, look like you, behave like you, have the same personality as you, and love people in spite of their weaknesses and their sins. People are going to sin. And this is important. And folks, if you don't remember a lot of what I said, remember this. Why is it that in Christian churches, the one place that's all about forgiveness, the one place where we all agree on one thing, we're all sinners. We're all there because we came to recognize that we're broken and we need Jesus. Why is it that after we stay in the church a while, we have no room for people who sin? Now, maybe if they come right out of the world, well, we can understand they came out of the world. But if they're Christians like us and they fail, well, you know, we just write them right off. That's the worst thing we can do. If there's one thing the church is supposed to be, it's a redemption center, which means it's a place for broken people, of broken people, learning to fix and heal brokenness, which means we've got to be open and talk about brokenness. We've got to be able to say, listen, sometimes I have an anger issue. I have a lust problem. I, I have a problem with, with forgiving people. Um, I'm really, sometimes I get easily offended. We've got to open up without feeling like other people are going to jump on us. And uh, this is a big deal. So you can see I'm spending some time on this point, but we have to be an accepting place. Now, a seventh technique for building a home is this. Show equity in conversation. When you're relating with people, don't do all the talking. Avoid sharing highly controversial opinions until there's an interest in someone else for your opinion or until you have the kind of relationship you've moved through those circles where you can talk about those things. Uh, don't necessarily, when you're in an introductory phase or circle in relationship, uh, lay out everything that you think that may be a very controversial opinion. Uh, sometimes things need to be heard later, not necessarily right away. That doesn't mean that you're not honest with people. It doesn't mean that you don't have 
opinions that are important. It just means that you recognize that in the early stages of building relationships, it's important to know the person more than to know what they think about every situation. You know, you're more than your opinions. And how many of you know that almost all of us have had very strong opinions in the past <clears throat> that we came to change later because we got more information? So we need to soften sometimes our opinions and we need to also show some equity. That means when I'm talking, um, I need to talk for a period of time that isn't dominating your conversation your whole time and I need to listen. There ought to be as much listening in a conversation sometimes as there is talking. One more thing about equity, if you're in a relationship where you have a limited amount of time, say you're between church services or church is about to start or, or you're at a home group and you've got just so much time, don't engage in a conversation or tell a story that's going to take 20 minutes to tell. Uh, because the reality is you don't have that kind of time. That doesn't mean you can't share, either learn how to share something in, a, in a, respecting someone's time or, or find a time where you can talk and open up more broadly. Uh, if you see somebody looking at their watch all the time, that's a clue that maybe you're saying too much or that maybe they need to go somewhere. And so show some equity. Uh, number eight, show respect. Everyone wants to be respected. They don't necessarily want you to love everything about them or think everything that they think, but they want to know that you at least honor them, which means be courteous, be polite. Don't point out obvious differences if you're talking to somebody that's from a different race or culture. Don't make jokes that, uh, that are, could be sensitive to somebody if you don't know them very well. Avoid crude humor. There's just some things that are just, just about being polite and kind. And if you're, if you're talking to somebody and uh, somebody else comes into that circle, acknowledge them, show some courtesy, show respect and honor. If somebody shares something that really uh, offends or upsets you, you know, take a deep breath and respectfully share your thoughts and your opinions if they're open to receiving it. Respect goes a long way to building relationships. You know, this is true also in, in families between a husband and a wife or between a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend. You know, sometimes we become so familiar with each other that we no longer carry the respect. There's certain things that if you're really in love with somebody, there's certain things you don't say to them. You're very careful about how you speak to them because you care about them. You don't want them to be hurt. But sometimes as you become familiar with somebody over time, you no longer think about their feelings as much. And uh, sometimes we lose the respect that's important to keep that relationship healthy. So show respect to other people. Now, this is a really important technique and we're almost done. Number nine, pray for people. You know, there's an old saying that goes like this. We become intimate to whom we pray, with whom we pray, and for whom we pray. When you pray and you talk to God, you build intimacy with him. When you pray to God for other people, you begin to feel connection with them. You can't despise somebody that you're praying for. The more you pray for them, the more it will help you to feel a connection with them. And then finally, when you pray with people, it builds connection. You know, we're in a home group tonight or today, wherever you're watching this, and there are people around you, presumably, that are listening to this message with you. Those people are precious in the sight of God. They have gifts and they have needs. They have a heart. They have hurts. They need others to help them heal, to help them develop their spiritual gifts. They need connections with God. They need prayer. They need prayers and they need to pray for you. Prayer is a way that you can begin to build relationships with people. Sometimes when someone's in a difficult place and you don't know what to say, just say, can I pray for you? And take a moment right there, grab their hand or put a hand on their shoulder and just say, Lord, bless them, help them. We ask you to give them grace. You know, when you begin to pray for people and with people, it starts to tear down walls and your heart begins to open and God begins to connect you with people. You know, the more you pray for people, the more you'll begin to sense when they're going through something. And the more that when you're with them, you're gonna have a genuine feeling of relationship because as you connected with them and with God, the Holy Spirit works in your relationships to begin to bond you together in a way that is incredible. And that's the one thing that we have in the body of Christ, in the church, that the world doesn't have in their relationships. 
the, they have to have alcohol or drugs or some other thing to connect them to people. But we have the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of God. And that should be stronger than any other vice, than any other substance. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God that the Lord is always in us and always with us. Remember, that person that you're sitting with or next to, that person that you're doing relationship with, that person in the church that you might disregard, that person has God living in them too. And in spite of all their weaknesses and the things that you may disregard about them, I want you to know that they have a heart that Christ loves, that he saved, and they have something in them that you need, and you have something in you that they need. Take the initiative, reach out, connect with people, Pray with people. Build relationships. Now the last point, and I'm always just going to say it briefly, is this. This technique is really important. Keep showing up. The second point I gave you was to show up. The last point is keep showing up. Don't do it once. Don't do it twice. Keep showing up. When you're going through a hard time, keep showing up. When you feel like you've gained too much weight and you don't want anybody to see you, keep showing up. When you feel ashamed and embarrassed because you failed, show up. The one place we ought to be able to show up, no matter what we've gone through or how we've fallen or what we're, how we're feeling about ourselves, is God's family, the church. Family is a place where you're supposed to be able to be yourself and be loved. Keep showing up. Keep coming to home group. Keep coming to a church service. And when you're there, don't just sit build connection, build relationship, build community. Even when people fail you, don't fail them. Keep showing up. Because the truth is this, we fail God. All of us fall short and God shows up every day. He's always with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And the Bible says that we are to love one another as God has loved us. If we'll use some of these techniques in our lives, It'll go a long way to building the kind of culture and community that God wants us to build in our local church. I'm so glad that you were part of Home Group tonight, and I, I know that you probably have something to, you want to say, or you might have thoughts that you want to discuss, and so we're going to leave you now to begin to have some conversations with each other. I want you to talk a little bit after we pray about what are the things that have kept you from opening up with others, and what are some of the things that you believe that other people need that you need to give to them? And then finally, ask yourself this question, which of these techniques do I need to implement right now to start building the kind of community, the kind of home that God wants us to have in the local church? As you pray together and as you talk together, I know that God is gonna to help to connect us to one another in a powerful way, and the world will know that Jesus is alive in central New York. We love you so much, God bless you. I just want you to bow your heads right now and let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that's in our home group right now. I pray, Father, that you would bless them, that you would anoint them. I pray, Father, that you would bind us together in the spirit of love. I pray, Father, that you'd help us to listen and to understand, and also to open up and share Lord, build a home in us and with us and among us, a place that you feel comfortable to live in. I thank you, Father, for our church. I thank you for every person in every home group, those that are guests, those who are members of our church, those who are just talking and building relationships with each other for the first time. I pray that you'd help us to connect in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you so much. God bless you. October is going to be an amazing month. We are in the process of finishing our sanctuary and uh, moving towards our outreach center in our All In campaign. It's very, very exciting. And I hope that you can come and be with us this Sunday in church. Uh, we're having a powerful time teaching about the power of your voice to change the world. Don't miss it. We love you so much. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Now it's time to talk together in your home groups about what you've just learned. You can download the discussion questions we have provided for you from our website, alcclife.org. These questions are designed to be used as a guide for your conversations. Don't forget to share a picture of your home group with us by using the hashtag home groups on social media. We hope that you've been blessed by this teaching and we'll see you next time for our home groups on Wednesday, November 2nd.